Woodside Energy and Shell have suspended talks with buyers to supply new gas into Australia's east coast market. The energy giant blames the Albanese government's intervention into the market and warns the move could lead to a shortage and gas rationing. Joining me live is the Industry Minister, Ed Husick. Ed, thanks so much for your time. What do you make of these warnings? Hi, Laura. Well, Shell's no, no worse than Facebook was. You recall when we had a government that had to intervene to correct a market imbalance in the last parliament. Facebook picked up their bat and ball and walked off the field. Shell are doing exactly the same thing and failing to learn that, as with Facebook, the country uh, thinks that that type of behaviour is not on, that governments have got a role to act in the national economic interest, exactly what we're doing right now. And these big companies need to understand that we are acting in the national economic interests. Is this just a game of chicken then? And do you think they need us more than we need them? I think this is the dumbest game of chicken that they've played. I mean, for months we've signalled this is a serious issue. For months we've signalled that we cannot have a situation where households have to make a choice about whether or not they heat their homes or businesses shut their doors because they can't get access to affordable gas, for instance. We've said for months that needs to be tackled. We've said for months the type of things that we had been looking at. We had talked to them privately and we've also flagged publicly what's going on. Uh, when they didn't move, we had to act. And that's what's, what's happened here, Laura. I mean, what we've got here is a situation where multinational gas com companies are squealing about the fact that the nation needs to confront these companies' obsession with Putin profits. Mm. And we have, as a government, made a decision that we need to ensure households and businesses can get affordable access to an Australian resource. You had a couple of options. None of them were great. It is a really difficult space. But with price caps, it's proving pretty mm. messy at the moment. A lot of detail to be worked out. Why don't you just go with a super profits tax and make that temporary? The issue we've got... Uh, Laura is to try and move the needle on prices uh, and having a situation where uh, you just tax your way out of this doesn't seem to lend itself to a credible long-term solution. What we're trying to do is two things. We want to stabilise the market as it is at the moment and by introducing caps that have been welcomed by manufacturers we can get a bit of that stability in place. And while we've got that time, mm. reform the market and principally do that through a mandatory code of conduct. Sure. That code of conduct is about ensuring that some of the behaviour we've seen in the market uh, that the ACCC has reported on previously, that that gets dealt with. Mm. And we will now consult with industry and others about how to improve the way that the market functions. But how long is this going to take? Because there seems to be a fair bit of consternation within the industry and probably not unpredictable, I might say. There's a lot of confusion about the reasonable price mechanism, how it's set uh, in perpetuity, how that takes into account a capital investment. Are you acutely aware of all these issues? I guess I'd say a number of things in response to that, Laura. I mean, our intention is by putting in the cap that we have that breathing space. Mm. So that's step one. And then we'll work with people about how to reform the market. The reasonable price provisions, which, by the way, uh, what is unreasonable about expecting companies that are making huge wartime profits from saying to them, you can make a reasonable profit while still charging a reasonable price. There is nothing unreasonable in the minds of the Australian public about getting the balance right there. And so we do want to do that. But a lot of these companies are, are saying, no one's spoken to us, no one's talking, it's just wrong. And the other thing I'd make the point is, this debate has been going on for six months. We have flagged they need to take this seriously. Yeah. And as always, Laura, they propose nothing and oppose everything. These ga gas companies propose nothing, oppose everything. Well, they propose a super profits tax. Yes, I'm sure. They also, uh, today I heard the Chief of Woodside suggest that reservation uh, had worked out quite well when industry fought that tooth and nail when yeah, that right. was first proposed years ago. And then when it's put to them about reserving gas now, they say, oh, well, it's a bit more complex than that.
Like well, I said, uh, just, just on that then, they, is it, they, is they it, com is anything. it complex? And anything that they're putting forward, they put at the last minute. Is it complex? Should you do it? The, the complexity when will you is do this. It? The, the complexity is this. If you've opened up a, a new gas field and you've made an investment decision about how that will work out, and then after you've signed the contract, the government comes in and says, we're just going to reserve that, that's difficult. So let's be quite direct and upfront about that. Hmm. But where it's identified that there's a possibility of extracting gas in a particular area and that the reserves have been identified and that you can step in, similar to what former WA Premier Alan Carpenter did back in Western Australia back in the day when he put that proposition to companies like Exxon and they you know, said they'd walk away from the deal and then came straight back to it. I mean, that, that is the type of behaviour we have to deal with with industry yeah. when we're trying to stand up in the national interest. And I just, I just want to make the point again. It's important companies make a profit. It means that they'll have secure work for people and they're contributing to the community. That's yeah. undoubtable. But it's not just about gas company profits, Laura. It's about the profits of the broader business community. It's about the ability of the Australian uh, community and the households uh, that access gas being able to get an Australian resource and an affordable and Australian price. Yeah, that's right. Just quickly, uh, from what my understanding is, there's a 12-month uh, time limit on capping uh, coal. Is that the same mm -hmm. for gas? And do you agree that they both need to be capped for, for anything to work? We're trying to make sure that whatever solution we have doesn't distort so right. that if you do something just in one side, mm -hmm. you'll have behaviours happen on the other. So we've tried to work through those issues, Laura, and we think we've got the balance right. And again, you know, our preference, and to be completely frank with you and, and the viewers, our preference would have been that the gas companies read the room, uh, pick up the, the expectations of the community are that we get balance in terms mm -hmm. of what's happening here and that they act accordingly. Now, they haven't acted, we've had to. We've done it in the national economic interest sure. to ensure that businesses and households can get access to an Australian resource at Australian prices. OK. When it comes down to it, it's going to... That's what's going to matter is those prices. So do you concede mm. that the electricity bills that we're going to get quarterly, they're not going to come down significantly, they're just not going to go up as predicted? Is that about right? Well, and that's, I think there are a lot of people, we, we think on average we can avoid a bill shock of around $230 for an average family mm. energy bill or electricity bill. Uh, and we are trying to soften the impact. I mean, there is a recognition, absolutely, yeah. as colleagues and myself have said, that what's happening in Ukraine with the, the conflict that's going on has driven up prices, and we understand that. But you've also seen profits go through the roof for a lot of these companies and we've got to be able to get some balance. So, mm. yes, there has been, and, and we, we you know, obviously had Treasury predict where electricity and gas prices would go in the next 12 months and that those figures released just on the eve of the, the budget. We've had to act uh, responsibly to get the balance right uh, and to do so in the way that ensures that companies can still make profit, a lot of them, not just some of them, and that households can get that access and, a, and affordable access at that.